Now, what is the square root of x squared? Whenever you don't see a number here, there is an invisible 2. And that's the index number. This is going to be x2 divided by the index number 2, which is basically x to the first power. Now, it turns out that the answer is really the absolute value of x. Anytime you take the square root or the root with an index number, if the index number is even, and if you get an odd exponent, you need to use an absolute value symbol. If you don't have an even index number, you don't have to use it. And if you get a even, an answer with an even exponent, you don't need the absolute value. The only time you need it is if you have an even index number, and if you get an odd exponent as your answer, then you need to enclose it using absolute value notation. So go ahead and simplify the following examples. The square root of x to the fourth, the square root of x to the tenth, the square root of x to the eighth, the cube root of x to the sixth, and also the cube root of x to the twelfth. So feel free to pause the video. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And because the exponent is even, we don't need to use an absolute value notation. When you square something, it's always going to be positive. The square root of x to the 10, that's going to be 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So notice that we have an even index number, an odd exponent. We need to include it or enclose it using absolute value. Now for the next one, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So because the result is an even exponent, we don't need to use the absolute value notation. Now the cube root of x to the 6, that's basically x to the 6 divided by 3, which is x squared. If you have an odd exponent, you don't need to use the absolute value notation. Negative and positive numbers can work inside a root with an odd index number. 12 divided by 3 is going to be 4, so we don't have to worry about it. Let's try some more examples. The fourth root of x to the eighth, the fourth root of x to the 20, the fifth root of x to the 25th, and also the sixth root of x to the 42. So 8 divided by 4, that's 2. And because this is even, we don't need an absolute value notation. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So we have an even index number, an odd exponent, and we need to enclose it using absolute value notation. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Since this is odd, we don't need to use an absolute value notation. 42 divided by 6 is 7. We have an even index number and an odd exponent as a result. So we're going to enclose it using absolute value notation. Now let's talk about simplifying square roots. You need to know the perfect squares. 1 squared is 1, so 1 is a perfect square. 2 squared is 4, that's another perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. And you have 36, 49, 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, then you have 144, 169, 14 squared is 196, 15 squared is 225, and then you have 256, 289, and the next one is uh, 18 squared, which is 324, 19 squared is 361, 20 squared is 400. So make sure you know up to 20. Now, how can we use this information? Well, let's say if we want to simplify the square root of 18, which is not a perfect square. What you want to do is you want to break down 18 into two numbers, one of which is a perfect square. So that's 2 times 9. We know the square root of 9. Let me write it in this order. Square root 9 times square root 2. The square root of 9 is 3. So your answer is 3 root 2. That's how you can simplify a square root. Try this one. Square root 75. 
So what perfect square goes into 75? 25 goes into 75. 25 times 3 is 75. And the square root of 25 is 5. So the answer is 5 root 3. Now what about the square root of 80? What is the largest perfect square that goes into 80? There's two of them, 4 and 16. But you want to use 16 because it's bigger. So you have the square root of 16 and 80 divided by 16 is 5. The square root of 16 is 4. So it's going to be 4 root 5. Now what if we have variables instead? What's the square root of x to the fifth? What you want to do is you want to break this down into a multiple of 2. But here's two ways to do it. The first way, ask yourself this. How many times does 2 go into 5? 2 goes into 5 2 times with 1 remaining. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Another way to get that same answer is you can break down x to the 5th as x to the 4th times x to the 1st. And the square root of x to the 4th is basically 4 over 2, which becomes 2. So this is your answer. Let's try another example. What about the square root of x to the ninth power? So how many times does 2 go into 9? 2 goes into 9 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8, and 9 minus 8 is 1, so there's 1 remaining. The other way is to break up 9 as 8 and 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and so it's x to the 4th times the square root of x. Here's another one. The square root of x to the 13. 2 goes into 13 6 times. 6 times 2 is 12. 13 minus 12 is 1. Or you can break up 13 into x to the 12 and x to the first power. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. And so you get this answer. Try this one. 2 or the square root of x to the 17. So we can write it as x to the 16 times x to the first power. And the square root of x to the 16 is x to the 8th. And so uh, that is the answer. Now let's talk about simplifying cube roots. 1 to the 3rd is 1. 2 to the 3rd power, 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. So 8 is a perfect cube. 3 to the 3rd is 27. 4 cubed is 64. 5 to the 3rd is 125, and we have 216, 343, 8 to the 3rd is 512, and then 729, and 10 cubed is 1,000. So let's say if we want to simplify the cube root of 54. We need to find a perfect cube that goes into 54, which in this case is 27. 54 divided by 27 is 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So the answer is 3 cube root of 2. Try this one. Simplify the cube root of 40. The only perfect cube that goes into 40 is 8. And 40 divided by 8 is 5. And the cube root of 8 is 2. So the answer is 2 cube root 5. Let's try one more example like that. What is the cube root of 375? So you can see that 125 goes into 375. 375 divided by 125 is 3. And the cube root of 125 is 5. So the answer is 5 times the cube root of 3. Now, what about variables? What is the cube root of x to the 8th? So how many times does 3 go into 8? 3 goes into 8 2 times. 3 times 2 is 6, and 8 minus 6 is 2. So there's 2 remaining. Now, if you want to show your work, what I would do is break down 8 into 6 and 2, because 6 is a multiple of 3, the index number. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. 
So this is your answer. Try this one, the cube root of x to the 14. So we can write it as the cube root of x to the 12 times the cube root of x squared. 12 plus 2 is 14. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this is the answer. As you can see, 3 goes into 14 4 times. 3 times 4 is 12. 14 minus 12 will give you the remainder 2. What about the cube root of, let's say, x to the 19th? So I would write it as 18 and 1. Since 18 is the highest multiple of 3, just under 19. So this is 18 divided by 3, which is 6. So this is the answer. x to the 6 times the cube root of x. 3 goes into 19 6 times with 1 remaining. Consider this expression, which is in radical notation. How can we convert it to exponential notation? This is equivalent to x raised to the 7 over 5. So this number goes on top, the index number goes on the bottom. So using that example, convert these two into exponential notation. The 7th root of x to the 8, and also the 4th root of x to the 9. So this is going to be x raised to the 8 over 7, and this is x to the 9 over 4. So that's how you can convert an expression from radical notation to exponential notation. So now let's try the same problem but in reverse. So this variable is in exponential notation. Convert it to radical notation. This is equivalent to the fifth root of x cubed. So try these examples, x raised to the 2 over 7, x to the negative 7 over 4, and x to the negative 5 over 9. x raised to the 2 over 7, that's going to be the seventh root of x squared. Now, if you have a negative exponent, you can make it positive by flipping the fraction. So that is by putting x to the bottom. So it's going to be positive 7 over 4 x to the 7 over 4 is basically the 4th root of x to the 7th. The next one's going to be 1 over x to the positive 5 over 9. And then that's going to be the ninth root of x to the 5th power. And what about this example? 1 over x raised to the negative 3 fourths. Now because the exponent is negative, if we move the x to the top, the exponent will be positive. This is x to the positive 3 over 4, which becomes the fourth root of x cubed. What is 8 raised to the 2 thirds? How can we simplify this expression? This is equivalent to the cube root of 8 squared. Or you could write it like this. Typically, what I like to do is write 8 cubed as 8 to the 1 third, and then raise to the second power. 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. The cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4, so that's the answer. Let's try some more examples. What is 16 raised to the 5 fourths? So what you want to do is you want to find the fourth root of 16 first, and then raise it to the fifth power. So what times itself 4 times is equal to 16? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 4 times is 16. So 2 to the 4th is 16, and therefore 16 to the 1 4th is 2. So this is going to be 2 to the 5th power. Now what is 2 to the 5th power? If you're not sure right off the back, see it this way. 2 to the 5th power is 2 to the 3rd times 2 squared, because 3 plus 2 adds up to 5. 2 to the third power is 8. 2 squared is 4. 8 times 4 is 32. And so that's the final answer. Now what about 32 raised to the 3 over 5? So first, let's find the fifth root of 32. 
and then we'll raise it to the third power. The fifth root of 32 is 2, because 2 to the fifth is 32. If you take five twos and multiply it together, it's 32. And 2 to the third is 8. Try these. What is 27 raised to the 2 thirds? And also 64 raised to the 4 thirds. So first, let's take the cube root of 27 and then let's square it. So what is the cube root of 27? What number times itself 3 times is 27? That's 3 times 3 times 3. So the cube root of 27 is 3. And 3 squared is 9. So 9 is the answer. Now what is 64 to the 4 thirds? So first, let's find the cube root of 64, and then we'll raise it to the 4th power. The cube root of 64 is 4. And 4 to the 4th, let's break it up as 4 squared times 4 squared, since 2 plus 2 is uh, 4. And 4 squared is 16. 16 times 16 is 256. And that's it. Now let's say if we have variables. Simplify this. What is the ninth root of x cubed? How can we simplify that expression? Well, if we convert it to exponential notation, it's 3 over 9. 3 over 9 reduces to 1 third. So this is equivalent to the cube root of x. Simplify this one. The fourth root of x to the 20. This is going to be 20 divided by 4 which is simply x to the fifth power. But we need to enclose it using absolute value. Simplify this expression, x to the 3 fourths raised to the 6 over 5. Now, whenever you multiply one exponent, or rather, whenever you raise one exponent to another exponent, you need to multiply. So what is 3 over 4 times 6 over 5? This is going to be 18 over 20. And we could divide both numbers by 2. Half of 18 is 9, half of 20 is 10. So this is x raised to the 9 over 10, which we can write it as the 10th root of x to the 9th.